Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Michael. I'm going to be your host for this afternoon. Also joined by Jackie today, who will be sat in the background and will help with any questions that you might have as well. So we're looking at correcting journals in CH50 accounts this afternoon. Probably spend in the region of about maybe about 30 minutes looking at that. Uh, we'll then hang around for any questions that you might have as well. Now you can submit your questions during the session. So if you think of anything as we're working through the, the demonstration today, please get those, that submitted uh, to us. Speaking of questions, a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. So you don't need a microphone for these sessions. If you've got one, it will automatically be muted. So you can't unmute yourself during the session, so you can't verbally ask any questions. If you have any for us, you will need to type them into the questions panel. So you should see that in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. You can't currently, all you need to do just on your toolbar, if you just click that little icon that looks like the speech bubble containing the question mark. Quite a popular request for these sessions as well is to uh, be able to download a copy of the slides. So that is available via the handouts option. Just give it a click. It's that little icon that looks like the piece of paper with a folded corner. Just give it a click and you'll be able to download a copy of the slides that we're using today. And there is an option just towards the bottom of your toolbar as well to switch to full screen mode. So when I'm sharing my screen during the session today, you may find it beneficial just so you can see things a little bit clearer if you do use that option. After the session today, you will receive a follow-up email which will include a number of links. One will be so that you can uh, register for additional webinars. So if it is your first one with us, I hope you enjoy it and you come back for some more. Uh, and the other link will be to rec our recordings list. So uh, what we tend to do is make the recordings available afterwards. So that link will be included on that follow-up email. There should also be a link to Sage University as well. So if you want to develop your skills and your knowledge of using Sage 50 further, uh, there's loads of free training available via Sage University. So again, link is included. Right, let's get started. So this is what we're going to be covering in this session this afternoon. So a little bit of background to correcting journals, first of all. And then we'll run through three main options, the edit and delete options and when they're available, how you go about using them as well. Uh, we'll look at manual corrections, which you have available at all times. You can always post an additional journal to correct an existing journal if you need to go down that route. And there's also the journal reversal option, which can just make that process that little bit easier. So if you haven't spotted that one yet, it should be available in everyone's software. But if you haven't used that one yet, it can be a good little time saver, that one. It saves you sort of, I suppose, digging a bigger hole for yourself with posting additional journals that, again, may be incorrect. Uh, just at the end, we'll explain more about the additional support that's available, give you a little bit of background to some of the benefits you have as being, being a SAGE member. Uh, and then also, We'll hang around for any outstanding questions that we might have as well. But as I say, Jackie's there in the background, so she should be taking and typing answers to any questions that you might have. So keep it busy, pop your questions in there. We'll either type an answer in for you, or maybe I'll demonstrate a, an answer here and there, or maybe we'll provide a link to you to uh, an article within our help center. So loads of additional information if you need it. But keep them coming. Right, so okay, so let's get started with a little bit of background first of all. And I think when we, we, we talk about journals, probably the thing that springs to mind is uh, the, the two male elements, posting your values, your debits and your credits. And quite commonly, people will get these the wrong way around when it comes to posting journals. Uh, but it's not just debits and credits that, that you, you're likely to get wrong. And there's a whole host of options, such as the date, the reference, nominal codes, uh, forgetting to maybe enter a department or posting it to the wrong department. If you've got charities enabled, you can actually post uh, journals to funds as well. Uh, even just things like typos, so popping in, the, entering a, a mistake within the details or maybe needing to amend the details. So there's loads of, loads of options that you, you need to think about and loads of elements to those journals. So we're going to concentrate on the, the main options that you've got available. So when you realise there's a mistake in your journal, what options do you have? Now, the first one we're going to look at is the edit and delete options. Now, the ability to edit and delete uh, journals, uh, first introduced in version 22. So everyone should have that if you run a supported version. Uh, there are obviously manual journals that you can amend. 
you'll be able to edit and delete those bank transfers. You'll be able to amend. And these days, you can also edit and delete imported journals. And I'll explain some of the differences between them as well, because you'll not you'll not necessarily be able to edit and delete all types of journal. We'll come on to that one in a few minutes time. But we're gonna look at the first scenario where we've got an option to, where we'll use have a look at the edit and delete options. So let me quickly share my screen and we'll run through a demonstration. So I've got a journal here at the top. So a basic depreciation journal. Uh, what I'm going to do, I've just entered this one manually. So I'm going to use the within the transactions list. So I'm on transactions, got my order trail listed. We're just going to use the edit and delete option so you can see what that looks like. So if you have entered a, a manual journal or posted a bank transfer or maybe imported journals, then if you highlight one of the lines of the journal and click edit, it will bring up this screen. So this is the same screen as if you were entering your journal manually. So it's the full details of that journal. So all elements of that journal that were posted at the same time. And it wouldn't, wouldn't matter either what line of the journal I enter. If I highlight the second line of the journal, for instance, click edit, it loads the full journal. So essentially it's that group of entries that were posted as part of that journal. Now at this stage, I can amend anything I want at this point. So if I wanted to amend the date, for instance, I can easily do that. Now it is an older set of data that I'm using for this one, so you might need to forgive that a little bit, uh, but we'll be able to amend any aspect. So if I posted something to the wrong nominal code, maybe I've, again, I'll, I'll put in a typo, I've used the wrong tax code, or maybe I've got the debits and credits the wrong way around, which we have in this instance. So what I'll do is I'll just amend that one. So actually we'll zero that one out. So we'll just switch the values around. And then we're ready to save it. Now we could, even if we needed to at this point, we could add, let's say I needed to break the second line down, the second line of the journal, maybe break it down between two or three different nominal codes. We could do that. We could just amend the value and start adding in additional lines. And when I save that journal, so it just disappears and return back to the, the list there. And the original journal at this stage now appears in red. So I just click onto that third line. So left. these two lines of the original journal that we just amended, they appear in red. So they appear in red just means that they're obviously they're, they're on the list, but because they're in red, they don't impact on my accounts at this stage. And what I would have, if I go right down to the bottom, is I'll have a copy of the updated journal in this instance. So it's managed to obviously put the correct date in. And you can see the, the debits and credits have been switched around at that point as well, based on the, the changes that I've made. Now you also have an option to delete a journal, which is in the same position. So if we just highlight this amended journal, for instance, and we click the delete option. So if you've maybe posted a journal, maybe you've you got interrupted and you saved your journal, you got interrupted and you think, right, well, I'll pick up where we left off and you've entered again. You can always highlight your journal and then you've got the delete option available to you as well. So again, it loads all aspects of that journal. And then all I would need to do at the bottom, I click deletes, just prompts me, do you wish to delete this journal entry? So yes to that one. And now, rather than it saying at the top where we amended the original journal, saying cancelled, what it now says is just deleted JC, deleted, deleted JD. And again, these transactions, when they're flagged in red, they, they do no longer impact on your accounts. So a quick question from John there. You're under the impression that the tax code for all journals is T9. Uh, you, you, generally, that would be the case, John. Most In most instances, journals will be T9. So if it's like a bank transfer or maybe salary journals, that type of thing, or depreciation journals, as we just shown in that example, it generally would be T9. But there will be instances, maybe uh, things like if you're entering a high, details of a higher purchase, for instance, that type of thing where there's pawn exchange, you're paying a deposit, there's the purchase itself you may find in that instance, you actually need to use a VATABLE tax code. So there will be the odd occasion where you do use something other than T9, but generally, yes, you, you're right, probably the vast majority of journals that you will post will be T9. 
obviously you can change that should you need to. So, you know, if you have posted a T9 in error and you realize it should have been a valuable tax code, again, that's one of the fields that I could have amended there. So that's the that's the, the sort of the first two options that we wanted to mention, the edit and delete options. In most instances with up-to-date transactions, you will be able to, you will have those options available to you. Right, okay, let's go back to the slides for a moment. Now there will be occasions where you have journals posted where you're not able to just edit them and make whatever changes you need to and maybe delete a transaction because you, you just want to get rid of it. And these will be journals that are posted automatically generally. So as part of the year end, for instance, a number of year end postings uh, will be uh, entered. So you, you essentially things like uh, year end postings, maybe if you, if you clear your audit trail as well, that type of thing where you've got an opening balance transaction, if you use the prepayments or the accruals option, Again, they will automatically post as part of that month end process. If you use the fixed assets register, and again, as part of the month end process, you process your depreciation. And also if you post via a nominal link, so if you use Sage 50 payroll and you post a nominal link through to accounts, because of the way it posts, you will be limited if you need to correct a journal. Now, what you will be able to amend on these transactions, and we'll have a look at these in just a second, is you'll be able to amend the what I would refer to as the text-based fields. So the reference against the transaction, the extra reference, the description, the details. But what you won't be able to amend for that type of transaction is things like the date of the transaction, the nominal code. So what, I suppose what you would term the, the, the critical fields, so the values, the nominal codes, the dates, the tax codes, etc. So it's really in that instance, just the text-based fields that you can amend. So if you did need to amend things like a nominal code, for instance, then you're looking at some of the other options uh, that we're gonna cover uh, in a few minutes time. But let's just quickly have a look at this sort of instance uh, where we've got a type of transaction where we are restricted. So we'll go back to my screen. We'll find a one that has been posted. So we're gonna pick on if I can find it on my list here, this one here. Now this transaction, there's a number of journals that have been posted in this instance. Uh, they've been posted via the prepayments option. So this is, as per my list, this is the one where I don't have that full flexibility of being able to edit all of the fields or even delete the full journal. So if I highlight this one and go to edit, you'll see that it brings up a totally different uh, screen this time. So well, this would be one that you're familiar with if you go to edit like a, say a bank payment or an invoice transaction or a credit for instance. So it only brings up the, the details of the single line of the journal in this instance, because it's not classed as what you would, I suppose, what you would term a grouped journal. So there's four elements to this journal you can see in the background, but it's only brought, brought up the, the, the sort of the details of the line that I've highlighted. So we can amend the reference, the description, but you'll see all the other fields, things like the dates, they're, they're grayed out. And if we go to the item line details at the bottom and click edit, you'll see I can amend the details there as well. But again, things like the nominal code, the date, departments, tax codes, values, they are all grayed out. But if I needed to amend the likes of, let's say the reference, I'll just put my initials in as an example, and save it, just prompts you, do you wish to post these changes? I'll click yes to that. And it will then, you'll see it's updated that one. So you are quite restricted in that instance for that those types of journals and the way they've been posted. If I was to highlight a line on this journal, so again, there's four elements to this part of the journal, and then use the delete option at the top, You'll see that when we get into this screen, the delete option is grayed out. So again, I can view the information at this stage. It doesn't even let me amend the reference or the description if I go into the if I if I go in via the delete option. So you find that delete is, is grayed out. So won't let you delete it in that respect. Which leaves you with the other options that we're about to cover next. 
again, keep your questions coming. If you think of anything as we're going through, we had some good questions there. So I think Jackie's picked them up so far, excellent. So we'll continue on and we'll start looking at our, our next option. So we're gonna go back to the, the slides just for a moment. And the next area we're gonna look at is the option to manually correct the journal. Now, as I mentioned, when we're running through the agenda points, you've always got this option available to you. You can always post another journal to correct a journal. Now, how you go about doing that will depend on, I suppose, what changes you need to make. And this is where if you've got a little bit of knowledge of posting journals, uh, then you can, this is a few different options for you. So rather than posting a reversing journal, you may post an adjustment journal. Rather than reverse it out, because you maybe posted the debits and credits the wrong way, you might double your value and just post one journal to correct it, rather than reverse it and then post it again if you needed to. So to post a reversing journal, so let's say you've posted a journal, you've made a mistake, maybe you've put it in with the wrong date, you're not able to uh, correct it, so you're not able to edit it or delete it because of the way it's being posted, then Manual journals and our manual correction can be nice and easy to do. So to generally post a reversing journal, all you need is to, to make a note of the, the information. So you'd find that information, generally the best place to get it is within the transaction screen. And you will post that journal with the, basically the same details as the original entry. Now that includes the date, the nominal code, tax code, values, etc. And all you would normally do is reverse the debits and credits. So where you've posted a credit originally, you would post it as a debit. And where you post it as a debit, you post it as a credit. So just switching the values around. So that's going to manually reverse the impact of your, essentially your original journal. Now, obviously some journals can be very lengthy, particularly on the payroll side. Payroll journals, not uncommon to see, you know, a 50 line journal. So you wouldn't want to have to sit there and do that manually. Now, I'm not going to demonstrate doing a manual correction. I'm sure uh, you'll be aware of how to do post a journal. So again, all you're doing is making a note of that information and you're just reversing the debits and credits, but otherwise all the same information as the original journal. Now to save you having to reverse it manually, what you can do is use the journal reversal option. So I'm going to show you how quick and easy that is, and it can save you a lot of time, that one, depending on the length of the journal, of course. Just makes it really simple to re reverse a journal out where you maybe don't have the edit or the delete options available to you. So journal reversal, it's available in all levels and has been since uh, Sage 50 Accounts 2014. It was released prior to 2014, but it was only available in higher levels. So if you were in essentials at the time, you wouldn't have had this option available to you. But since since 2014, all levels of Sage 50 has had the journal reversal option available to them. So nice and easy to use. So let's quickly run through an example. If I can find the right button to share my screen, there we go. Right, so what I'm going to do is, this is an imported journal, this one. So if I highlight this as an example, and I go to edit, it gives me that one where it's restricted. So I can, admit, again, I'm back to being able to amend the, the text-based fields only. So if I need to reverse this journal, so this salary journal that's been posted, maybe that was posted as part of the nominal link, and let's say I was in a position where maybe I don't have a backup that I could restore to undo that, or you know, maybe I've done quite a bit of work in the meantime, so it's not practical to restore. So what I would do is in that position, I need to reverse the journal. Now to do that, easiest thing to do, just make a, a note of the, the date of the journal. So in my case, the first of the uh, 1st of November, 2018 on this set of data that I'm using. And all I would do is I would go into nominal codes. I've got journal reversal at the top. Now, if you're on an up-to-date version, you should have it available. If it's not available to you, it's gonna be for one of two reasons, either it's hidden or it, maybe it's down to your access rights. Now, if it's hidden, 
And what do I mean by that? Just in case you're wondering. In case you're not aware, on your toolbar at the top, if you right click on your row of icons, it will give you a list of the icons that you've got available to you. So a journal reversal is on there. It could be I've switched that option off. Maybe I do want to see that. So there may be other options that you look at and think, well, I don't use that. So if you did want to use that feature, so right clicking anywhere on your toolbar and thinking, well, you know, maybe I don't use that prior year report. I've got no intention of using it. So I just switch it off and it sort of declutters your, your toolbar along the top. If you want to get those options back, just right click and you can either switch back to use defaults. It'll reset your full list for you or you can start switching options back on. So if you're looking for journal reversal and it's not there, just again, right click. It should be listed. It'll list the options that you've got access to as per your access rights. And you should be able to switch that option back on. So anyway, rather than going into post a manual journal and switching the, the debits and credits, what we can do is just go into journal reversal. And this window will pop up. Now you are prompted to print the daybook nominal ledger report at this stage. Uh, <laughs> Is it one I would encourage you to do? I'm not sure. I don't think I, I don't think I probably would encourage you to print that report at that point. You've got a list of the journals that you need. Uh, you do have an option to take a backup now. I would probably encourage you to take that at this point. But other than that, if you're already to proceed, just click OK. It'll bring up this window. Now it prompts you for a transaction range. You can enter that if you want to. It, it, it'll just default to your full transaction range, number one to whatever transaction number you're up to. So I would normally just leave that there. You can narrow it down if you want to though, but I'm just gonna leave mine. And then all I'm gonna do is change the date. So my, in my case, it was the 1st of uh, November, 2018 on this set of data. So change the date. I'm gonna leave the reference on the department as is, click okay. And what that will do at that point is it will give me a list of the journals that meet that criteria. Now, you might have more than one journal or one series of journals that, that have been posted on the same date. So it might identify more than one. And that's where you could have used on the, the drop down. You, you may have entered a transaction number range as well. Let's just cancel back to get where we were. So it's identified these journals that have been posted as per the criteria we specified. And all I need to do at this stage is highlight the journal that I want to get rid of. So in this case, it's all of these lines that form part of that salary journal. Now, if you've just got a full journal listed, rather than go down and say, right, I want to highlight these and start highlighting the individual lines, what I can do is I could just click swap at the top and it will highlight everything for me. If you find this, I don't know, let's say there's 50 lines of one journal and two lines you don't want, what you could do is swap to highlight everything and then maybe remove the highlights for the journals that you don't want to reverse. But let's say we want to, we want to select everything. And then all we do at that point is we click reverse. Now, obviously at this stage, what you've selected, it must balance. So if I deselect that line, you'll see it doesn't balance then. And when I go to reverse, I'll get the standard sort of message. So it's no different from if, as if you were entering a journal manually. So it's got to balance, same rules apply. So it does balance this time, so I'll click reverse. Now it takes me to this screen. Now th what this will show is only the journals that I've selected. So on the previous screen, it would have been all journals that meet that criteria, this screen, is the one that will show the ones that you've actually selected. So it shows you all the lines and all I need to do at that point is click save and that's it done. Now, if you pop into transactions, you'll see the original journal is still there. So it's still active, that, that original journal, it's still a live transaction in your account. So it's still gonna impact on things like your activity windows, etc. but it has been reversed. Now, if I go at the end of the transactions list, you can see the new transactions that have been posted. So just a quick way of essentially cancelling a journal that you've already posted if you're not able to just go in and delete it.
Again, keep any questions coming that you might have. So just pop them in that questions panel if you think of anything. So that actually brings us to the end of the demonstration. So a nice short sharp on this one. A little bit more information though, just before everyone disappears from the webinar today. And we are gonna stay on online just to answer any questions that you might have. So if you've got them, keep them coming. But just to quickly mention some of the resources that you do have available. Uh, obviously the Help Centre, nice and easy to access that. You've got access obviously to our support team as well. But the Help Centre, which you can access directly from within your software, got loads of information in there about corrections and not just for journals, but I suppose anything and everything else to do with your software as well. So you can search that, look for answers, the support guides, links to webinars, there'll be videos in there. And of course, if you do need any help, you can't find what you're after, or maybe your scenario is a little bit different, you can always get in touch with our support team as well. Now, something you'll see us promoting quite a bit of over the coming months is uh, Sage membership. Now, if you have downloaded the handout as well on the next slide, which we'll see in a moment, you're going to be provided some links to some of the benefits of having Sage membership. It's all free to sign up to. Uh, so the three main benefits of having Sage membership and signing up to it, you're going to have Sage University. So you're going to have access to all of our free e-learning courses and snippets of training, etc., that you can take advantage of. You've got Sage City as well. So this Sage City is a bit like a forum board. So you'll find details of blogs. Uh, you can pop your questions and answers on there as well. You can submit suggestions for changes to the software, etc. So do do check that out as well. And also Sage Masterclass as well. Now I've included loads of in the, I've included this slide in the handout as well if you if you want more information about it, but you will be hearing more about this in the coming months. So Sage Masterclasses, it's not it's not about using your software itself. It's on about sort of uh, you know how you go about creating a, a more human company, that type of thing. So loads of uh, uh, business owners doing talks on there, so you can take advantage of those as well. So the very first session that it mentions there is how to create a world-class onboarding experience, how to develop and nurture talent within your company, and how to retain the talent you have as well. So again, if you want to take advantage of that, you just need to sign up so you're essentially a Sage member, and then you'll be able to view, view those courses as well. Again, if you haven't downloaded the handout, just on your toolbar, you have a little icon on the right-hand side. Just to plug some of the upcoming webinars we've got, and obviously Sage membership is one of those. Uh, but next week, we've got a brand new topic that we're adding into the webinar portfolio, and we're gonna be looking at the Chase Debt View within customers. So that will be on Wednesday, next week at 2 p.m. Have you got any requests for sessions that you'd like to see covered as well going forward? There'll be a little survey pop up as you leave the session today. If you've got any thoughts, ideas that you want to share with us, just pop it on there. And some of the other upcoming sessions as well, we're going to be looking at various aspects of invoicing over the coming weeks. We're going to be looking at the report library and how you can take advantage of that one. Uh, bank reconciliation and also using the feeds option. Business dashboard is a brand new topic that we're going to be bringing through. If you did attend a version 28.1 session, you'll have seen the enhancements to the business dashboard. But when we, when we did ask people on, on that session, have you ever used the business dashboard? The overwhelming sort of response to that one was uh, either no or I've never even heard of it. So if you want to find out more about using the business dashboard and what it can do, why not get yourself signed up for one of those? So keep an eye out as well. The links are provided on the follow-up email, which you will receive in around about an hour's time. And that's going to include links to our webinar registration page and also to our list of recordings. So by the time you get that, there should be the link to the recording of this particular session should be made available to you. Right, as I mentioned, that takes us to the end of uh, the demos and takes us to the end of the information that we want to provide to you. But as I say, we will be hanging around just to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, for those of you that are about to leave, there will be a little exit survey pop up as you do leave. If you can take a minute to share any thoughts, ideas, any feedback you want to share with us, 
If you could take a minute to complete that, that would be great. And as I mentioned, you will get that follow-up email uh, in round about an hour's time. A couple of quick questions that I've got there. Uh, so one from David, do you have any webinars on opening and closing stock? Uh, not at the moment, David. It's something that it's, it's quite a broad category, that one. So uh, I think if we were going to run something on opening and closing stock, uh, then <sighs> do you mean opening and closing stock journals? If that's what you mean, let me know, because there's some great information within our help centre about how to post opening and closing stock journals. Uh, so we can share that information, or if you just do a quick search in the help center, you should find that as well. Um, Bruce, you mentioned about just a thanks for on the tip on clearing up the toolbar. I'll just quickly share my uh, screen again. Uh, just in case you aren't aware, just on the, the subject of cleaning up your toolbar and maybe hiding options that you don't use. Uh, some of the other options that you may not be aware of as well, you can do a similar sort of thing for your navigation bar down the left hand side. So if there's any options that you don't use, for instance, diary is a common one. Not sure anyone actually uses that option, but you find probably find the odd one that does. So if you wanted to get rid of the diary option, for instance, to declutter that navigation bar again, just right click anywhere on that area. It'll list the options that you've got access to. And of course, you can just switch it off. So you, you can right click anywhere on your navigation bar to show or hide these options. Some you will be able to show and, and hide, others will be, we will be fixed on that toolbar. Same for your toolbar at the top and also for your columns as well. So if you haven't come across that one before, if you right click on any of your column headings, again, there may be maybe columns that you want to show or maybe that, you, maybe that you're just not interested in. So if you're not actually that registered, for instance, you might want to switch off all the VAT related columns or if it's just yourself uses the software, maybe switch off the username column. So number of options there for you. Again, you can always switch them on at any stage though. So a few good tips for you there, Bruce. Hope that, hope that helps. Any other questions for us at all? Remember, if you do think of anything, you've got access to the Help Centre. You've got your Help Centre link at the top top left-hand corner of your navigation bar. But on the subject of webinars as well, if you click on your home page, which is this top option on your navigation bar, you've got this panel on your home page so that you can access the webinar, the webinar list so you can see what's available. So if you do you lose that link and you've been searching around for it, that's where you'll find it. You don't need to necessarily retain your uh, any emails that we send you. So just literally give it a click. And if my browser opens on the right screen, there we go. So this is the link that you'd be provided with as well on the uh, on the, the follow up email. So this will contain a list of all of the webinars that we've got coming up and that you can register for. They're all free to attend. Again, if you can't attend one, don't worry, we will make the recording available afterwards. So again, just, just to confirm how you, you access that one. So just on the home page, you should have this panel for free webinars. You may find yours looks a little bit different when you go to that page, but free webinars should be listed for you. Bruce, you mentioned uh, just a comment on the, the sort of the reorder levels. You think that's confusing? Anything like that, and that goes for anyone on this session uh, today. If you've got any suggestions for the software, you find something confusing, or you think of maybe an idea that would just improve the software or make it a little bit easier for you to use, then all you need to do, just on your homepage, you've got the roadmap option. So if you give that one a click, It'll take you across to the roadmap. And if you if you did attend the version 28.1 session, you, you might be aware of this one as well. But the roadmap is where you can find out what's happening with your software. So you can see new features that have been delivered. So if you want to get up to date, you can see what's coming next. You can find out information about what we're looking at going forward as well. But you also have the opportunity to have your say. 
So again, via Sage City, you can submit your ideas. You can see what other people have uh, been asking about as well. And you can vote for those as well. Uh, Chitin, your, 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 your comment there. Again, if I could just ask you there, when you, you fill in the, if you get a chance, if you pop that onto this survey, uh, just as a suggestion about how we can improve the webinar, just put that on as a suggestion for a new topic. Uh, we'll, we'll pop that onto the list of maybe possible webinars to cover going forward. Right, okay, if there aren't any, any other questions just at that stage, I think we've managed to pick them all up. Uh, we'll end the webinar at that point. So once again, many thanks for coming along. Hope you've enjoyed it. You found it useful, giving you a bit more confidence in using your software, and we hope to see you on some other webinars soon. Many thanks. <laughs>